salivary calculi or xylolithiasis. Xylolithiasis refers to the formation of concrements or xyloliths inside the ducts or the parenchyma of salivary glands and most commonly occurs in the submandibular glands and their ducts. Epidemiology Xylolithiasis is the most common disease of the salivary glands accounting for approximately 50% of all major salivary gland pathology. The submandibular salivary gland is most commonly affected with almost all remaining cases located in the parotid gland or the parotid duct. This is primarily believed to be due to the increased viscosity of secretions from the submandibular gland. Xylolithiasis is a disease of adults and typically between 30 to 60 years of age. There is a male predilection. Clinical presentation of xylolithiasis. Typically patients present with a history of recurrent swelling and pain in the involved gland, usually associated with eating due to obstructions of the draining duct, that is the submandibular duct or the Wharton's duct, thereby slowing down or disabling the flow of saliva. And this in turn predisposes to infection of the gland proximal to the obstruction resulting in bacterial xyloidinitis. In chronic cases of obstruction, the gland undergoes fatty atrophy and becomes asymptomatic unless secondarily infected. Here is a case of xylolithiasis of the submandibular duct. Plain radiograph in xylolithiasis. Not all stones are radioopaque. Plain radiograph is able to visualize only 80% of submandibular stones which are usually located in the duct and only 60% of parotid duct stones more frequently found within the substance of the gland itself and this presumably is due to differences in the composition of secretions of the parent glands. Here is a submandibular duct stone. treatment and prognosis. In many instances, conservative medical management suffices. Hydration, moist heat are helpful and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs may be beneficial. Sucking on something sour such as a lemon may increase salivation and promote spontaneous expulsion of the stone. If these measures are unsuccessful, surgical removal of the salivary stone from the duct may be required. In chronic cases or if the stone is positioned within the parenchyma of the submandibular salivary gland, the gland may need to be excised. Increasingly, non-surgical options exist to treat symptomatic stones and they include extracorporeal xylolithiotripsy endoscopic stone removal, endoluminal balloon dilatation and stone extraction. Here we see a submandibular salivary duct stone at the opening on the right side. Acute submandibular xylitinitis secondary to a ductal stone. This is the salivary gland stone that was extracted and the defect left behind after extraction.